Hi there, I'm back and today I just want to do a brief video about my smaller blender, my Oster Dual Action. And uh, the reason for this is, um, as those of you that subscribe to my channel are probably already aware, I have a DIY video from several, maybe six months ago, um, on how to make your own silicone gaskets for the Oster Pro 1200 blender. Well, today I decided to make some for my smaller blender. Even though these gaskets are everywhere and they're very easy to find, they're a similar rubber, except they're gray rather than black like the other one, the Pro 1200 are. Um, the reason I decided to do this today is, now I don't use my dual action as often as my Pro 1200. My Pro 1200 is literally used every single day for smoothies and soups or salsa or whatever else I can throw in there, but it's at least once a day it gets used. Um, my little dual action I use probably a couple times a month, every month, for an assortment of things where I need something slower, a little bit slower speed, specifically making mayonnaise or something like that. Um, but and here comes the reason, the number one reason I want to make new gaskets here out of a different material. Um, I brought this up today to make mayonnaise. I ran out of my homemade mayonnaise. And um, I noticed the last couple times I've used this that the, the blender jar has an odor that's been building and getting stronger and stronger. And I'm trying to get rid of it. I'm soaking it with hot water, dish soap, baking soda, vinegar, everything. And then it smells great right after I wash it. But the odor creeps back in. I'll, I'll bring it out to use it. And it's like, wow, I can't get rid of that odor. And it's a very strong, pungent odor that if any of you take vitamin supplements, um, you may be familiar with uh, a B-complex vitamins. They're bright yellow and they have a really strong odor. Um, and they, they don't taste great either <laughs> if you're if they're tough to swallow. But um, that's what this smells like. And the reason for that is I all, I make all of my own homemade pet food, and uh, including my cats. They get a raw meat diet, and I'll use this blender because I love the Fusion Blade for this. I'll use this blender to blend up um, and completely dissolve um, their vitamin supplements. And of course, there's a B complex in there. And here I was worried about the fish oil <laughs> leaving an odor in there when it's actually uh, the B vitamins um, that I can smell. Now, um, you can look this up if you want, but I know for a fact, at least in my kitchen, this is how the rules are. If something has a strong lingering odor, there's a real good possibility there's lingering bacteria. And I have washed this, bleached this, done all that, and the odor still comes back. Now, I'm hoping that a bleaching cleaning solution with hot water is enough to keep us from, you know, contracting anything from this. But for me, I just, I if, when I start cooking something, whether it's for me or my pets or, or anybody else, I want to start with clean tools. I don't want to have to deal with something smelly. So this has to, now this also accumulated over time. This wasn't something I've you know, been putting up with and then just decided, hey, that's bad. But I'm going to use it as a stencil. And these little rounds here um, are left over. This was the inside piece from the larger gasket I cut out for the Pro 1200. So I'm just going to use that as a guide. And, uh, and it's actually a perfect size. I just have to cut it just slightly smaller. So I'm just going to move my scissors here for a moment. And I'm just going to lightly... Just hold it in place and lightly trace around the outside. And even if it skips a little, it, it doesn't matter because, you know, you'll see where your circle is. And then go around the inside. Okay, and you can see, let me pull that up so you can see it. And see, I have my outside and inside lines. And because this one is smaller and doesn't have all those locking notches and stuff, it's just it's just a smooth circular cut. I'm going to go ahead and use my scissors. Plus, I'm only trimming off this tiny amount around the outside edge. And I'll show you my trick for getting getting the inside out, the inside piece cut out, I should say. And it's this outside edge you want to be 
a little more careful that it's the right size because if you oops if you cut this a little bit too small yeah you don't want it to leak so it should be you know kind of evened up with the original so you can see I've got my edges are even okay and then to cut out that inside what I'm going to do is fold it in half now this silicone is very springy it's very hard to cut with just the tips of your scissors <laughs> at least with mine I don't know how dull these are but they're just paper scissors so I'm just gonna make a slit in the center like that and then I can get in here and carefully cut to that inside line and then I can go around the outside here okay I think I need a little bit longer cut to give me some space there we go all right And the inside is not quite as uh, crucial as far as uh, the measurement from the outside. To the, you know, if, the, if you cut the inside a little bit thicker, you know, so that it's a little wider, like here, it's a little wider than the original. It's not, you know, it's not the end of the world. As long as your outside edges are even, then you're good to go. And then discard that. And then we're going to try it out. Here's my my blender. Let me um, come up a little bit. There we go. So unlike the Pro 1200, you don't assemble the whole cap thing first. You're going to lay this just like you would the gray one. You're going to lay that on top. And then in go the blades. like that and you just want to make sure that you're even all the way around and that none of the gasket has slipped in there because it it'll you know whip around and probably get ground into into bits so and then you put your cap on but because this one is blue it's easy to see from the inside of the blender jar so you'll see if if anything buckled and it didn't you can see it's nice and flat so let's give it a test with some water Okay, I've got about a cup and a half or so of water in here. And there's nothing dribbling out. It's dry. So let's put it on the base and give it a spin and do the acid test here. Turn it on and I'm going to just put it up on high real quick. <laughs> that's not a leaking balloon you hear that's my dog <laughs> he likes to sing along with the blender every single morning so if you put it up on high speed you're going to get a chorus okay and there is no leaking whatsoever it's still nice and dry my base is nice and dry so that is a success so, if you'd like to replace your rubber gaskets with silicone, this is a really, really easy DIY that takes like five minutes to do, and it's very useful. You're not going to pick up all those odors, yucky odors and bacteria. They're easy to wash. I think they even seal better because they're softer and they're more pliable. Um, they're not going to dry out and crack as easily as the rubber ones do. So, uh, with that, I hope this is helpful to you. If you like my videos, please give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any new uploads. With that, have a great day. Bye-bye.